Hello and welcome to the Free Cheese, episode 571. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Matt Sellner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. If you're reading the title of this, you already know this is the second part of our discussion around Tetris Effect Connected. Our first episode was back earlier this year, episode 553, where we talked all about the multiplayer, the connected part of Tetris Effect Connected. Today, we will be talking about Journey Mode specifically. Before all of that, and before we dive in to why we're talking about Tetris Effect, Matt, what puzzle game needs a Journey Mode? What puzzle oh. game out there needs a complete reinvention, reinvention that just sort of gets weird with it? Dr. Mario would be real, real, really weird, and you can do acid trips. That'd be, <laughs> yes. Some really cool... Uh, you saw like, the Wonder Engine. Didn't that get weird? I never played it. Yeah. yeah, 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 it did. Yeah, if you did some weird, some of that weird stuff in the background, some of those, like, uh... <clears throat> strange screen effects and yeah you could you could have fun with that use the wrong color pill or yeah it could be it could be a fun one you're a big dr mario guy i've i've come to learn i like dr mario it's a shame i mean I, that mobile game was so bad but i kept playing it <laughs> yeah i'm sad they shut that down on you i know you really you i was enjoy. going through it was steady i would go with my waves or prior to that were you like dr mario on game boy or I had Dr. Mario on Game Boy. I don't think I played it as much as I like would have now if times were different. Um, but I definitely have a different appreciation for it. Do you f- ever fire it up on the uh, NES stuff on Switch? Or... No, nah, I always kind of forget about it. Until I, I open think... the NES, I'm like, oh, let's play some Dr. Mario. Yeah. I think they've got it on... I think they have the N64 version on there. I don't remember if that's a thing or not. I feel like it is. I would play. I'd play that version. Um, yeah, I I want to see more games do weird stuff with with their. I don't know, just the the presentation. I think Tetris has had a few versions that got a little weird over the years, but this is definitely the weirdest one, and I think the most interesting, visually. Uh, although. As we always talk about on these Tetris episodes, the uh, Tetris, it's a Grandmaster. Mm, mm-hmm. That's that's an excellent Tetris video game. I've continued to play a lot more of that too to try and like really get get better. But anyway, so we're going to talk about Journey Mode this episode. Matt, why is Tetris Effect on the docket this year? It's the Wii Sports Killer. Uh... Time to die. Yeah, I mean, uh, I forget the exact reason now. I had it on here that I probably said in the first episode, and I don't have up my script from what <laughs> my reveal episode had. Um, well, the big thing is, while well, Matt... Was it, it was something like universal language, right? I think, yeah, something about that. Approachability, yeah, that kind of... Yes, that. mainstream, because we sports, yes. It's all coming back to me now. Sorry, needed, needed the sip of coffee. Um, no, um, meet Wii Sports, again, Tetris Effect connected, uh, nominated as one of the Wii Sports killers this year. Um, one of the things I always talk, uh, we, I think we mentioned in the Wii Sports episodes, approachability, and anyone can kind of pick up and play it. Uh, my two games were kind of geared towards that, but more so Tetris. Um, just, I think everyone knows how to play, someone, everyone knows how to play tetris in some way whether it's good or bad but you know clear the lines get a score stay alive um and then yeah i i think this is one of the best tetris entries ever i think it's intriguing it evokes emotion unlike anything else i've seen with a puzzle game yeah to what you uh, hinted at earlier and um i think the connected stuff is um it came after the fact and we only really talked about Tetris Effect. So the connected stuff was a lot of fun, um, or is a lot of fun to play through. Um, it's a unique mode 
for Tetris besides just regular head to head, which this game has, but um the three oh one stuff is, is pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And we did a deep dive on that last time, so back in April. So go check that out, episode five fifty three if you're looking for the multiplayer stuff. But this time we're gonna talk about the single player stuff. We're gonna wander back into twenty eighteen. Do you remember the first time you played Tetris Effect? Yes, I think I was sick. <laughs> nice. That's a good time to play Tetris Effect, I think. Because Tetris Effect feels like home in so many ways, so there's nothing better than feeling like you're at home and just cozy while sick. I think I can't remember if it was the same sickness I was watching all of Mr. Robot or if they were mm. similar at the same time, but yeah. I was playing. That lines up. The timeline. Because I remember like not going through all of te- uh, all of journey mode in like one sitting because having the headphones in my ears <laughs> hurt mm, <laughs> for yeah, the yeah, head yeah. pressure. I remember going to buy dog food and being in the pet store and seeing that the game was live, and I pulled the trigger in the app and pushed it to install on my PS4 for when I got home, and then coming home headphones playing it forever it's weird my like visual memory of playing it was is like in a different space than i actually played it like i I definitely played it i know which room you know what i mean like all that but yeah my memory of it's a little fuzzy in that regard but it was a uh a true journey what do you your first journey mode was probably sick you did not go all the way through i remember going I think I got all the way through it in the first run, but it's probably not true. If I check the trophies, I probably, you know, had a day or so difference. But, um, yeah, there's definitely, and there's definitely easier parts to get through, as we'll we'll talk about moving through this. Um, since then, what's your experience with Journey Mode been? Uh, I believe this would be, because I cleared it again prior to this. I have at least cleared it three times. Yeah. It may be at a fourth because I may have did it once before game of the year that year. Um, but I this is the my third time. Um, all on different consoles. <laughs> um, first one on PS4. Second one, Xbox Series X. Release day of Connected. Um, when, um, when the Xbox Series X came out, it was the first game I played on it, I think. Um one of the shorter downloads is a big advantage of that as well. And then on the PS5 this time around. Yeah, and it it looks really good on PS5 as well. Um Yeah, it it just yes. It's one of those things that like you don't always get like validation of a purchase, but it's one of the ones where it's like yeah, I'm I'm happy. I Yeah, that was that was one of the other reasons like for on series x why i wanted to play like it was the i knew what that game had the potential to like in 4k and it was it yeah it warranted all the purchases before in the 4k tv the xbox like everything kind of just clicked yeah yep um yeah no i i agree uh i'm with you i the i I definitely like I will come back to um I'll come back to journey mode with several I've done it several times where I'm like I'm going to just sit down and play through journey mode all the way through and I don't I like get halfway through or whatever even like the most recent playthrough that I did I picked it up and my journey mode save was like <laughs> partial through the the thing um I do remember way back when borrowing Mark's PSVR one and playing through uh journey mode then in VR. Um and it was a totally different experience. And it was we had a a bunch of people were over, we were all hanging out, we Friday night pizza party, playing games. Everybody left and Mark left the PSVR here. And as soon as everybody left, it was like, I'm strapping in. Um and the first <laughs> thing I did was Tetris Effect. I just sat and played through journey mode all the way through. Uh, in a sitting. And I don't think I went to bed until like five in the morning that night after everyone was gone and then I just kept playing and whatever. Um and I did that again for this this run. I, I made sure I like sat down and did it all in VR. 
I I think I had the headset on too tight because by the end of this, my head hurt a lot, which doesn't typically happen in VR. Um, but this is one of those great experiences too, where in in VR, especially, like you can just look around and see everything. But like, it's nice because I could just like plop in a place. It, like I just sat on a random chair down here and just got locked in, headphones on, everything. It was very, very immersive. The crazy thing about journey mode to me though is like VR is just a bonus. The journey mode itself already is super immersive. I think headphones are pretty essential. Um, but I imagine they're, I wouldn't say optional, but like, you know, they're, you can kind of, you can get away with, uh, with TV speakers and still have a pretty immersive experience. I think, um, yeah. Yeah. There's a difference. I did TV speakers prepare for this episode. I did TV speakers for about the first, I'll say half for the first half of this. Uh, and then an idea that I pitched, uh, maybe have to replay everything. <laughs> and I did the <laughs> yeah. whole thing in, um, in headphones and there's a, there's a difference. Well, let's talk about that idea you pitched. So Matt, you came up with a cool idea for this, where as we talk through journey mode, we, uh, we both kind of ended up jotting down uh, your, correct me if I'm wrong. Your pitch was write down basically word association with each level. What what yeah. comes to mind as you play that level? Um, um, so we we each did that. Yeah, I uh, yes, I we always talk about how like this game evokes emotion, and we never I don't think we ever like hit the nail on the head as much as we could. So I challenged us in a way, and yeah. I went more phrase because my my vocabulary probably not as sharp as it could be. Um, I feel like I was I was becoming more that artsy critic. I by the, by the halfway point, I felt like a real asshole, really like critiquing the the imagery and the level, uh, and, and coming up with some kind of phrase. So please call me an asshole in in the comments or or whatnot as a as we go through this. <laughs> but um, no, I, I it challenged me to kind of really think on maybe a slightly dip, deeper level than I already have to to come up with this, and I think just kind of rolling through some of what our thoughts are per level will kind of maybe get the point across of how weird this game is. I uh, yeah, I agree. So yeah, we'll go through. I did like first word association. It's weird though, like some of these, I remember writing down or thinking these things and like my gut reaction when the level started was this but then some of these like as you start playing like i'm gonna spoil one right now one of these is ice cream is my it's what i wrote down oh ice oh it's your thing okay all right that was my like gut reaction which is ice cream but by the end of the uh level it, it should not have been ice cream you know um, um i yeah i didn't think about that i but then after about the first area, I made it a rule to not write anything until I was done the level or the the stage, I should say. And then yeah. I would pause as the next brick was dropping in the next stage and write down quickly some thoughts and maybe some reasoning. Uh, so I did a similar thing, but I was stopping and actually taking the headset off and writing things down at the end of each area. So I would just mentally make a note uh, of... Oh, okay. Because in VR especially, it was hard to, like, stop yeah. and write things yes. down. Um, but I, yeah, I just kind of did that where, like... And it's easy enough. I think there's, like, what, one section where there's five Five, stages? yes. And the rest of the... Uh, it might be two of five, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, two so of five were... is the last two of five. No, actually, the last three of a five. Right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two. Three. I have yeah, five, yeah, yeah. three areas. So was a little, that got a little tough to like keep track of. Like, what were my five words? But it was easy enough to to get there. So, um. So yeah, we're gonna go on a journey here in this episode, and we'll just talk uh, briefly about each stage. We'll go through and and just describe. Obviously, our our sort of word association, phrase association. We'll we'll get to critique matt's critique on the fly here uh and and we'll come out on the other side different people the first level the deep what do you got what, what was your 
the unknown ocean. Oh, nice. Okay, and, I see and, where you're going with this. And there's a metaphor there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is good. Uh, first thing I had was experience, was the one word association. Okay. It just kind of in it. And, like, obviously the song in this has a very important background with us. And... Yeah, there's that. Um, I I put, like, I put a comma here. And usually when I had the comma, I would, like, describe why. but. I just made the note, like, I still get chills playing this level every time. I probably played this more than any of the other episodes or uh, air- other stages just because yeah. of the fact of trying to start a journey mode and just never finishing it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah after all the numerous times playing through a stage, still get chills each time. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it doesn't make sense. Um, next up is Karma Wheel. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, Pharaoh's I, Code. Pharaoh's Code. Pharaoh's Code. I looked too far ahead of my notes. Uh, Pharaoh's Code. Oh, what did you up. have for this one? Welcome to the experience. Oh, interesting. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because this is like, now you're in it, dude. Uh, especially because that first level, like, swells really big at the end and then, then it pushes you into it, right? Yeah, this also, it has like a big beat drop to it. It, crescen- it does that crescendo thing, but it really like hits the hammer for the last section, the last like eight lines or so. Yeah, yeah. For me, the word was static in this one. Mm, okay. Just the feeling I had while playing it. I think just because it, it does have a little bit of that, like, you do feel like you're in stasis. Like, it, stage one kind of slips you into it, and then by the time you're in Pharaoh's Code, you are, you're Neo in the pod, man. Like, you're just floating through this. It's, it's time. You are, you're going down the tube. And so correct me if I'm wrong, you're just in a triangle the entire, or does the triangle keep like going in and out? Moves. Like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Um, stage three, Karma Wheel, <laughs> which I described as chaos. What did you have? I this is this is the worst one. I think this is after this one. I was like, all right, I got to actually like try. I just had fun. <laughs> that's I think that's fair. Fun chaos, but this one is. It's sort of just like erratic there's um, chaos because there's like tradition in like asian like culture kind of going on and then yeah. there's like this weird beat that just clashes with it but works so well it yes uh and i do generally as we go through journey mode you'll see this sort of like injection of different world culture all throughout this and i, I do feel like in that sense it really leans into what you brought up at the beginning about this game being just so not just approachable but universal like it's Tetris is a universal language, and this game, I think, exemplifies that through its stage design. Um, yeah, because this is the one that has the, um, what what are they called? They're, they're like those, for lack of a better word, they're like shields, but I don't know what to call them. But they're on the side, and just like they're bouncing like drums to the beat, yeah, and it yeah. keeps, again, it's another one of those levels where like it picks up speed as you're clearing lines. Is this the one now I'm, I feel like I'm going to mix these up. Is this the one that's duh, 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 duh. Like it's got the little. Oh, like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to remember the exact beats, but I just, I have that as like the, the beat with the, like the background track, like, yeah, like the, like the Asian inspired theming with the background track. Yeah. I just yep, love yep. fun. Probably chaotic would have been better, but I, yeah, no, this know. is my worst one. That's my worst one, my laziest one. But, oh, besides one I missed, but we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the end of Area 1. So Area 1 is uh, the Deep, Pharaoh's Code, and Karma Wheel. Um, it's a solid, I think, introduction to kind of what the game is going to be. And I think in each of those three, you get a, a decent enough variance between color and sound and display that sort of like, they show yeah. you that this game is ready to, to go places and i think it's uh important to note like you can do a full journey mode but it's only after you beat it as you're beating it for the first time you go area by area so yeah uh like for instance you'll do stage one these three stages in a row and then no matter what no matter what your board looks like whatever you're pulled out of the experience given the grade and you must go back into the next area and it does it in sets yeah yep so it's almost you almost get like a reset of like feeling and vibe a little bit yeah yeah um, which brings us to Jellyfish Chorus. 
What did you note for Jellyfish Chorus? Electric Awe. Ooh, nice. All right, you're you're starting to get to some. Like, yeah, I told you. I've come a real asshole by the time. Uh, yeah, we're done no, this here. This is good. This is good. These are like Kenny G album titles. <laughs> I'm I'm into it. I have uh, Awake. Ah, I like that feeling because the one. same thing. This is uh, it's kind of not too. There's a couple levels that are like the deep with like that blue water yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. But this one has jellyfish, and again, it, this is a common theme in most of these. As you clear lines, things increase. Like, it, and when the beat increases, the level also like the drop speeds increase. Yeah. Um. But this is like the the jellyfish are like becoming more active in the water. Yes. As yeah. time goes on. And the, you'll see this a lot if you play some of the other modes outside of just multiplayer, but some of the other single player, like uh, non journey Tetris modes, some of the challenge modes, they do split the levels up by sort of element, like earth, air, mm-hmm. water, fire. So there are, you'll see a lot of those things as you play through the journey mode uh, in particular. Um, yeah, jellyfish course, deep undersea. And then, of course, right to Da Vinci, which is high in the sky and this one i really should have written awake for because it's so bright mm-hmm. like i remember my i like blinking in vr just because it's like you're in pitch black <laughs> dark dark mode deep. dark mode dark mode dark mode light <laughs> yeah. murderous um but yeah this one also i just want to point out like da vinci also has um these little gear yes. icons for the so that's the thing like we, we we've talked about this a bit but the Journey mode, it not only changes the background, but the pieces themselves change. It's not always just clean, even square-shaped Tetris pieces. Uh, in this case, there it's the same you know setups that you're used to, the, the, the traditional Tetris formations. But the actual individual elements of them, in this case, they're just gears. Yeah, uh, for- you get that. And then the color... The color palette changes, even if it's just the normal squares. You at least did it get a different color that matched like the accents of, yeah, the the stage. Uh, for this one, I I had stuck. I don't know if that's because I felt so stuck. blinded okay. by <laughs> it, but just stuck was where I landed. Where did you go? The mechanical farm. That apt, very apt for this. It does have that like. I don't know. Yeah, it's like that, especially with the windmills. In I the kept sky thinking the Midwest, gear. Midwest. It, yeah, it's like this is like Final Fantasy XIII's Midwest. You know what I mean? Like everything's sort of <laughs> yeah, sure, floating in the sky, and yes, but like still needs to be a little bit pastoral. Um, next we've got prayer circles, which it's it's this one's odd to me because it's so similar to the jellyfish r- at first. Yeah. Uh, that you almost feel like it's like a step backwards to that or that you're repeating a level. Um, what did you I have think, for this one? This is, I think this is the first one where I, I struggle a bit because we're starting to see the same like water like kind of yeah. levels. But I, there, <laughs> there's a reason. Let me, I'll say my thing and I'll get to the reason. I said Futurama Bubbles. <laughs> As in... And, uh... and then... If you, I don't, there is a beat. I don't know if it's a small section of it, but like there, there is a small sampling of this, of this track that sounds like the intro to Futurama. The dung, dung, it's like the way the bells go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was sitting there playing it. I was like, Futurama? (laughs) Yeah, like you're waiting on it to start with the, yeah. yeah. That's funny. Yeah, Um, so that's why Futurama. I had dancing for this one. I think mm. mostly because the pieces themselves just sort of seemed to dance. Our next one is the fourth and final stage of Area 2, Ritual Passion. Which this is where I had ice cream, and I don't know why. I think it's, it's very hot in this stage. Like it just feels mm-hmm. very hot. And mm-hmm. I just, I don't know, I wanted ice cream while playing it. Um... This one's cool too, though. Like a lot of cool chanting, and, and the music's very different um, from what we've seen. Fire so far. pieces, not to go yeah, back to what yeah, you said with the too, heat. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Uh, um, what was your? Uh, I, I know the title is in there, but keep in mind, I probably wasn't seeing the title. I might have saw it in passing, but wasn't paying attention. Uh, but I said yeah. ominous ritual. 
Oh, that's good. I like that. No, I mean, I don't think the titles are like super prevalent. During yeah, the no, but I just I didn't realize my phrase had the wording of the yeah, stage. I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that you saw it and did that i feel like that was a natural reaction especially the the visual design of it like you see these sort of like fiery images of people in a circle performing the tetris ritual so that that fits and again like this one we still kind of don't hit all of the elements i don't think there's really one that you could call an earth level in this case, like prayer circles kind of goes there, but it still feels more like a water level to me. Yeah. Because of the bubbles, the bubbles, it makes it feel like you're underwater. Yeah. Um, but area three changes that kicking off right away and deserted where you are wandering through the desert. But then this one goes to a mountain as well. Correct. Eat, or the sky. Oh, I didn't mark it. Sky. Yeah, I know. I can't remember now. Um, it goes somewhere. I think it. I think it's the sky because I have a note somewhere else about climbing mountains. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we'll say sky. We'll I'm guess that. Yeah. Either way, start off in the desert. To which I have uh, wander. Mm, that's good. Just kind of, you know. That fits this one. You're, you're wandering. Uh, how about you? What is your poetic humanity? Twist Oh, that's As nice in, too. Like, a, like a look at what we can accomplish. Because the way yeah. I think, I think it was like this is where we started, and we got to the sky, and it's like we we're, we can get here now. Kind of, kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes that makes sense. And then we dive back into the ocean with <laughs> a lot of water. Surf. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what did you have for dolphin surf? Embrace the sea. Because yeah. the dolphins. You're riding with the dolphins underwater, but then they surface. Yes. Yeah, which this is another one that kind of gets like, ah, yes. brightness-wise. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's, it's so weird. I've got a... After that King of the Hill episode, I, I don't trust dolphins anymore. <laughs> I had a depth for this one. Just because mm. it... Yeah. It, it's kind of on the nose with that, but yeah. No, then like, but like to what you said, dolphins are just incredibly smart. So them surfacing, it's like, look what the sea can bring us. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm, we're getting into the asshole territory. I, I think just, we're starting. Off I don't think you need to keep calling yourself that. I think you can. I, it's safe. You're in a safe place here with this. You know, I think the game itself begs us to. Do yeah, what you wait to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is uh, downtown jazz, which very much. Uh, New York inspired. Uh, mm -hmm. To which I wrote home. That was my word association. Ooh. I don't know why, man. There's something about the way that New York City, obviously I haven't, I've never lived there, but there's something about the way that New York City is depicted in media at times that just makes it feel perfect. And it's it's something that I think like, the way that New York is depicted in specific episodes, specific moments in episodes of Hey Arnold, I think is like so poetic and perfect. I think this stage does it really well. And next month when we play Little Big Planet, you'll see there's a, a level in there. That ah, just, okay. It's like there's something it's since I was a kid, I've always had this like image of New York in my head, this very specific idea or feeling around it. and. It's very few things that take me exactly back to, like, my six-year-old self and imagining what it's like to be in New York. But these are some of the things that do it. And this level is that. And, again, home is sort of the, the feeling. So I had uh, culture as inspiration. See? Exactly, though, right? Like, this, this level has that. Like, there's so much, I think, to the cityscape and so much that, like... I don't know that that you get out of it, again. I used like this. I I like look uh, reflect on like the crescendo again to the music. It just starts off as jazz, and then it mixes in layers to the jazz, and it becomes kind of more modern to what you would expect in kind of more modern music today. And yeah, it, yeah. like you like sampling, like, like sampling is a big deal in music, especially in like in hip hop. So yeah, the call and the New York 
and everyone's yeah. favorite Alicia Keys, you know, singing about New York. <laughs> All right, well, you went there, so I'm going to go side, <laughs> side story time. One of the last times I was in New York not too long ago, I uh, had never walked the Brooklyn Bridge or just kind of visited that part. So after uh, going from Brooklyn to New York, instead of taking the train back over, it was like, all right, well, let's just wander the bridge across this time, which and it ended up being way hotter than you thought mm. it was so just a miserable time by the time you get halfway through but you just got to do it anyway um it was very like it was a cool view it was you know whatever but there's a spot like somewhere in the middle where they had these like selfie stands set up where you could put your phone in a thing and then stand on a thing that spun the phone around you and spun you around in a way or whatever so you could get your stupid social media recording of you in New York and your phone spinning around you. But the song that played was that song. Was it Concrete Jungle by Alicia Keys? But yeah, I, yeah. not so. the whole song. It was just the chorus where she says New York over and over again. So, and, and remember, like, you're walking slowly in a... And at this point, by mm-hmm. your, the midpoint, there's a crowd surrounded watching the stupidity of people getting on and off this thing. So tra- foot traffic slows. You are just subjected to no, yeah, over and over, like for a good twenty minute stretch of this walk. Just I that wish, part. I wish you would have brought up the story last week because that's how that song in Advice Six is in that level. Like you keep going, but you just keep hearing it in the background. <laughs> like it doesn't yeah, escape you. <laughs> and this, uh, yeah, it's exactly how walking the Brooklyn Bridge is. What that experience is like. So. In case you haven't done that, it's like playing Device 6 in real life on a bridge. <laughs> uh, next up, we go completely outside of the city and into Spirit Canyon. To which, uh, how did you describe Spirit Canyon? Live on the land. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, a lot of that imagery. Uh, Native there. American kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. You're, and I, I love that you're in like the uh, what is it? What is the, the spot called? There's like a really pretty one of these out there, like cantaloupe, not cantaloupe. Ant- Couldn't tell you. Yep, I don't remember. It's not definitely not cantaloupe canyon. But if this was, if we still named the podcast uh, by something stupid that one of us <laughs> said, this one would have been called <laughs> cantaloupe canyon. <laughs> I think it's antelope. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I had painted. Don't know what that means, but I've got painted. That was my word association with Spirit Canyon. Um, Wait, sorry. Just to back up. Downtown Jazz, the Tetris pieces are also made out of traffic lights. Just want to point that out. Oh, yeah. We didn't say that. That was great there. Um, But no, Spirit Canyon, I really like the colors in this level. Uh, The way that it kind of brought together... you. You are at the bottom of a canyon, but you also have a bit of the, like, stardust kind of feel to it. Um, that was a nice touch in this one. And as you keep going, like, the light from the canyon, it's like you're kind of traveling through the canyon, and and you get more of the light coming from the, the, the top part of your bo- screen. Top, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But not in a blinding kind of way. No, no. Jeweled Veil vale is our 12th stage. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Spirit Canyon wraps up Area 3. Mm-hmm. Area 4 begins with Jeweled Veil, vale, uh, which I have Celebrate written down because this reminded me of Christmas ornaments. I had, uh, I had new beginnings, and I, don't, I didn't write down the reason why. Oh, mm. yeah. Jeweled Veil, vale, right? Yeah, new beginnings. I don't know. That- I don't. I don't remember the exact reason why. I wish I would have written that down. Yeah, but like, this does feel a little bit like a recapitulation of the deep in a way. It's a different visual style, but this does feel like there's a there's a few moments in this game. I think um, Mermaid Cave, Metamorphosis, the Deep. I think uh, Jeweled Veil. Vale, they all kind of harken back to what you get in the deep. It does feel like you are starting the journey over again, but not in whatever. Um, 
I should also point out, it's likely at this point that uh, your board might have taken a turn for the worse. So you may have literally mm -hmm. had a new beginning because you had to uh, <laughs> restart. Because that journey mode does get tough um, with some of the random speed increases. It makes it difficult to stay ahead of your board. Forest Dawn is our second stage oh. of Area 4. I think they clicked out of the tab. <laughs> um, you can go first while I'm pulling back up that, that tab. I had a sleep for Forest Dawn. This is the Ooh. one where the uh, it's kind of you're in a bamboo forest. It's raining, and the pieces look like little leaves in a way, um, and they do shift as the the level changes as well. But it just sort of starts off like very peaceful and comfortable, sleeping in a rainy bamboo forest. Uh, this reminded me of being in. Arashiyama in Japan. There's a a bamboo forest, and going there when I visited that spot, it was raining, and it just this was like immediately back there. Um, I have romantic about nature. Ooh, see exactly. It's that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Can you elaborate on that more? I mean, to what you said, it's very, it's the greens. I think the greens stick out. And yeah. um, this screenshot doesn't have, but aren't there like, oh yeah, you see, like there's trees and stuff in the background. You're kind of going through a forest. Um, yeah. And the, um, and the pieces, they're not only they're green, but they have like that black line to, re rep to resemble leaves almost. So you're like, you're stacking yeah. um, on top of each other. No. And it was the, the, I don't remember the song exactly, but I think it was like one of those soothing ones. It never really like picked up. It was just. Yeah. It was never it had, a, it had Yeah. It had a BPM at some points, but nothing crazy compared to some other stuff, especially when we get very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kaleidoscope is next up. What'd you have for Kaleidoscope? I, I remember struggling to think of something for this one, but I, I just put I didn't put in pause and reflect, mm. and I didn't put a reason why. It might be because of uh, just like the repetition and the song that was with it. I don't remember the exact track now, but I don't know. I, it was it's a it's a bunch of kaleidoscopes at the end of the day with some blue. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Um, I similarly enough, I think I have inside as my single word association, which. I think in the same way of like reflection and, and sort of retrospection that sort of just like a kaleidoscope, it's always like, you know, in its nature, it's just sort of twisting one series of images in and around itself in a way where you're kind of forced to be in it. And I, I don't know, there's this sort of immersion or something. Next up, uh, our penultimate area for stage, Turtle Dreams. Which I had speak is the word that I wrote down. Don't know why. All right. Okay. Good All day. right. Well, What's I can't have? help you much because I had nothing. Oh, why this not? Is the, um, I have a feeling. So I don't can't say for sure because I I realized I had nothing for this right before the episode started. Um, I have a feeling my board was fucked at the end of this <laughs> stage, and celebration kind of starts hot a little bit. And yeah, I probably yeah. was in recovery mode and not thinking about <laughs> what what artsy thing to put about this stage. <laughs> yeah, it's it's more about how am I going to get through this stage rather than uh, write uh, poetically about it. Yeah, so celebration starts off with a bang. Uh, I've got explode for celebration because it. I mean, mm. I had uh, kind of popping off. And the colors yeah. are very bright and bold yes. here too. Yes, I had, I had showtime exclamation point. <laughs> that's that's good. Um, yeah, this is the first one. I think you hit double digits in the level. Like you flirted with eight and nine. I think you hit ten for the first time with celebration because there's some moments where the BPM really kicks in. It might not even be ten. It might be like eleven or twelve. In yeah, uh, I mean, it, but you hit double. Yeah. You certainly. I think. I'm pretty sure this is the first level you hit double digits in journey mode. Yeah. I agree. Um, and that one brings us to the end of Area 4, which there's seven modes, technically. Or, I'm sorry, seven areas overall. Oh, we um, should talk about Celebrate. It's like fireworks are going off, by the way. Yes. Yes. 
Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's like a upbeat, very, and then, like I said, it gets so fast, you hit a double-digit level for the first time. Yeah. Um, that's a good, there's a good, uh, like, pace to it, though. A good mm-hmm. beat overall. Area 5 starts off with Sunset Breeze. What did you have for Sunset Breeze? Um, I think I hint, I think I've said something of this before, but I I've, I had celebrate heritage, and oh. I think it was the the children laughing in the beginning that kind of yeah yeah or not laugh or like speaking oh no I had children laughing yeah yeah it's like some giggling yeah mm-hmm. uh, I have dream I think just the warm tones and you're kind of like peering through a window out into this like it's like a sunset. Uh, yeah, nice something about like, the end of a day just sort of always feels dreamy like you're in this twilight little moment uh, Aurora Peak I think uh, very unpoetically I've got climb here how about you uh, the climb of life is what I have <laughs> <laughs> that's good um, yeah yeah because it's you're starting at the base of a mountain but like you end like the end of the level you're at like the northern lights yeah or Northern Lights esque appearance. Yes. Um, I really like the mountain in that though. That's a cool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good visual. After that, we've got Zen Blossoms. What do you have for that one? I have reflect on what you've become. Oh. What? Do you feel like you uh, you did that in that moment? Were you keeping it specific to Tetris and your journey as a Tetris player, or do you feel like it? I, I think I'm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that might have something to do because I, I will say I don't know. If there's a drop off, or if I just become more like an asshole because I, the game's treating me like an asshole because it, it's getting hard at this point. Um, and I, I just think maybe this is maybe there's like a, a valley here. Because I think Aurora Peak is another one that uh, crescendos up until, like, the Northern Lights area. You get, like, a beat drop. I think here it's nothing crazy, and it's just, like, take a breath, and, like, you you come this far. I I think that's where I was going with it. There's a lot of that, and I think this game, especially with headphones, but, again, I I think you can kind of do this without it, but I think headphones really are super critical to the experience with this. But there's just, there's a lot of moments like this, to your point, where, like, after a big, intense level, to have one like this that sort of falls back down and just asks you to be patient and just sort of be part of the Tetris board, you do get this, like, weird meditative state that happens. And it's like, I know there's, like, you know, the the name of the game, Tetris Effect, is very much a play on the idea of the thing, the phenomena that people, phenomenon that people would play so much Tetris, they start seeing Mm -hmm. the pieces falling in their sleep and all that stuff. But like, I think the other side of the Tetris effect is just sort of that like Zen like state that you can reach sometimes when you're playing Tetris or doing other things like Tetris. But I always have had this with Tetris, even prior to this game where like, when you really get into the rhythm of it, you just kind of forget where you are. You don't know where time is, where time started, when it stops, you're just in it with the board and the pieces. And this one, definitely is evocative of that i i I think the other thing too like this is another one like another like nature level is very plant-based it's like Mm -hmm. these plants on like lily pads that seem to be floating but also it's small little visual detail the everything's green but the um the tetris pieces and the board outline is pink to make the blossoms as it kind of goes and skirts over top the plants yes yeah yeah, it's I, I really, really like that stage a lot. Um did I say mine already? Did I say still? Still? I don't still. remember still. Okay. That was that was my phrase for this one. And then next up, yin and yang. Which this one I just seeing the, the way it's like presented to you with the sort of twisting ball of balls of fire and it's not really ice, but you know. Just kind of those opposite colors. Yeah. Uh, I had balance was mine. How about you? That was probably better. I, I, I bef- Again, I'm going through this. I don't see the this, this stage names. I, I think this, if I would have seen it, it would have been more in your territory. But I had, like, overcome your conscience. Because as you, like, they're battling each other. And it's almost like, you know, that comical, mm. like, you have, like, 
the good, you know, your good conscience and your bad conscience, and it's always competing, you know, yeah, at yeah. sometimes. Um, I, I was seeing that kind of like uh, that 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 battle almost happening. And also note here, this is the hardest level yet. So I think maybe that's why I had overcome your conscience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and we close out Area 5 on Hula Soul, uh, which I just wrote vacation. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what did you have? Um, not too, because it's closer to that island ritual one that we had. Um, yeah, but yeah. I had Ritual of Tetris. Ah, yeah, Because yeah, I yeah. know this has a brutal difficulty jump at the end of it. Yeah, I don't know why I wrote Vacation other than, like, <laughs> I don't know. Just sort of, like, leaving the, the last, who knows. This was literally, like, most of these are, what was the first thing I thought when this level started? <laughs> So that was sort of where I was at. Mm -hmm. um, this is also going to be like five of five. So I'm in between this and the next one. I'm like stopping to remember what the other five were. So, yeah. But yeah, this one, definitely uh, a brutal one. And I, I think in this most recent playthrough, I made it through. But then it set me up terribly for the start of Area 6. I was going area by area, so I had clean, clean slate. I definitely failed Hula Soul, though. I know for a fact I probably failed it. So, got a couple uh, plays at it. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's a, it was a brutal one. Um, area 6 is our last, like, multi-stage area. Um, we start things off with Starfall. What did you have for Starfall? I realize now I kind of repeated myself here. It's slightly different, though. I said, look at where we've come. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, though, I think part of the journey is, is that reflection. I, I think that's, that's apt. I have a lost. Just the word lost. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and it's one of those, like, planet, like, uh, you're in the stars kind of thing. I mean, the name pretty much says it. And you're just, like, some fallen stars, all dark. Yeah. Yeah, I like the darkness of this one. It's, this is nice after the, like, bright and intensity, uh, Hula brightness soul. and intensity of Hula Soul, yeah. Uh, balloon high, just a bunch of hot air balloons. <laughs> it's pretty good. What'd you have for this one? I, I said nothing could stop us. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, it's better that I've got float. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, because no, the balloons kind of keep going too. Like you, yeah. you're you're floating with the balloons, but the area they're in, they keep going up and up and up and of course the level gets harder, and harder. yeah, yeah i i think like i would keep brutal yeah i i think uh I, i'm not, probably not failing every stage at this point once but like maybe every second stage as well yeah yeah it's, it's yes which was a bummer because i thought this was going to be the time i like made it through journey mode in one fell swoop but it just didn't happen I kind of forgot that uh, you have to beat the game before you do that, but I'm playing through this. Obviously, I knew it wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna happen. I wanted the uh, what do you call it? Like, I wanted the high score at the end to be reflective of my. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. didn't happen. Uh, what did happen is we dropped down to Mermaid Cove, uh, which I had ending for Mermaid Cove because I Ooh. think. Yeah, I don't know if it's because I just have played this so much and I love Metamorphosis and, and that, that stage when we get there, but, like, Maybe. Mermaid Cove, it just feels like some sort of finale to me. I don't know why. I, I have what could be next. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, there's, there's just a finality to this level that, I don't know, maybe at some point in the development this was meant to be the ending and that's what we're picking up on or something. I, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but what is next is Orbit. Uh, what did you have for Orbit? Mankind's next step. Okay, so I had technology, which, yeah. Yeah, this is very much like... Space, uh, like you're in a spaceship. Yep, space station yeah. on the moon kind of thing. That kind of playing off the one step for mankind quote. Yes. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. The next Good. step. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, the next step is Tetris. Um, our final stage in Area 6, Stratosphere. What did you have for this one? I think because of the soaring nature of the level, I have be proud of your accomplishments. Maybe, again, um, knowing we're at the end. Yeah. But again, I, I think there's something like freeing. Like there's a bunch of birds flying yeah. in this one. It all feels like you're sort of floating and flying with the birds themselves. And there's just a sort of like, I don't know, transcend. I, I have escape as mine because it just feels mm. like we're, we are now leaving Earth. Um, which also I get. Again, I think I, it's because I know where we're headed. Which is our conclusion. The uh, nine minute <laughs> long or whatever it is. Maybe not that long, but th where all of the rest of these stages require, to require you to clear 36 lines to advance to the next. Uh, area 7 requires 90 clears to clear the stage itself. It's just one stage, though. Like, just this, one. Is, yeah. this is it. Yep. Um, what did you have for Metamorphosis? What was your... Kind of a play off the lyrics, but everything has led to this moment. That's good. That, that's really good. Uh, I've got Rebirth as mine. Mm, it's good, too. Um, uh, is yeah. this one of the best levels in all of video games? I'm just going to say it. It is. It really is, dude. Like, this is one, and I probably talked about this last episode, but it's just so special. And yes. there's nothing that, like, makes me feel more, like human than this level i think i don't know man there's so like this you hit level 20 at the end of this level uh i think yeah. it's the is it the first time you touch 20 you've been in the high teens i know yeah a lot yeah. of this a lot of last area but i think this is the first time you hit 20 you hit it at the very end i failed in the high 80s a couple times trying to complete mm. it um and while Maybe maybe Victoria heard different from upstairs. Uh, I was never happier to have to replay a level in a way. <laughs> yeah, this one's always <laughs> a good to have to restart. Um, yeah. I will say, like, I had been playing. I had to step away trying to finish this. I feel like I was just, I wasn't seeing blocks straight at some point because I had been playing for, like, two to three hours. I had played all this straight. And then got here and failed a couple times. I went and ate dinner. I did the Bloodborne thing or the Dark From Software thing where I walked away and came back. Took yeah, two yeah. twice after the walk away. Um, but yeah, no, each time I'm just like bobbing my head. Yeah. And just like, the it's the black background. It's the colors. You get like a little bit of every color. You get some of like the little imagery in the stars um, from the previous levels. It's... And the 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 track is yep. one of the best tracks. Again, the one of the best tracks in a fantastic soundtrack uh, of video games. The level, the design of it is perfect. It's the perfect crescendo. Like if every stage crescendos in some way, this is the crescendo to journey mode and in, in, in itself and in an encapsulation yeah. of it. Yeah, and it and, does um, it so well. Yeah, and then at the end of the day, it's Tetris, and it's Tetris at its hardest. You know, it, it, it can be harder, I know, but in the scheme of things, uh, this is this is as hard as it gets. Yeah, I I really really love this, and I I think I made the association last time, so I will will repeat myself now and forever. But this gave me the same sort of feeling that I got when I beat Near Automata's final ending E, like. That, like, just, it's these, like, and it was so cool at the time, too, to have this. Because, like, Near All Time, it happened 2017, and you're, like, I remember getting through Ending E and just feeling, like, this connection with humanity in a way I'd <laughs> never felt, A, before, and B, especially not while playing a video game. Um, Playing a video game alone, right? Like, mm -hmm, that yeah. especially. But then, like. To have another thing that gave me that feeling a year later in Tetris Effect was, like, so special. And I don't think I've had anything since that's come that close. No. Wrong. I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. It's very rare. But it's it's super special. And I still get the same feeling when I return to it. Like yeah. It's, 
like it's I said, so was cool. the first stage. As many times as I played that stage and still get chills, it's not it's not the same for all the levels. Um, I probably have a general f- same feeling as what I've been like using my phrase as, but this one again, yeah. timeless. Can play it, same emotions come out every single time. It's just fantastic. Ten out yeah. of ten. Like yeah, I know. No ifs, ands, or buts, in my opinion. No notes. Not at all. No, I, I love it. I really, really love it. Um, and that's journey mode. It's it's a really... It's such a unique, weird uh, experience for... I think a, not only a Tetris game, but a puzzle game. And just... I like that it gives Tetris a like single player adventure in a way like you yeah, are this is, going through things this is one of those times where like there is i never i've never played it cuz you know i enjoy the challenge but there's a beginner mode in it in this game and yeah. i almost would challenge someone like they're not good at tetris do beginner mode and just coast through and just experience journey mode cuz it's yeah it's weird. It's so weird how just backgrounds and soundtracks can evoke emotion and yeah. feeling, and just you you hit your it gets you it gets you thinking on top of the Tetris. It does, and it's I brought up the meditative experience of this before, but like I really think that this is something where you can just if you kill the lights. If you sit down, this would honestly, if you have one of them OLED switches, I would buy this twice on that thing and just let the, all of the black just settle into, oh man, I would, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, this is one of those things where I'm trying to think of other, like, there's, there's tasks you can do in like, like for me, I find a lot of this like sort of like Zen mind clearing, whatever, if I'm cooking. Because it's like, I know I need to, I'm like cutting and preparing these things to do this with, like it's all, especially a more involved recipe. It, you know, when you have to like very intentionally do these things, like once I'm in the rhythm of it, it's this like perfect little moment where everything else shuts off because I need to focus on this thing. So I don't like cut my finger off or screw this up or burn something or whatever. And, like, while one part of your brain is doing that, the other part is just, like, that's where I'm figuring out life, you know? And I feel like you can do that in Tetris effect journey mode, top to bottom. Just go through. And there's there's definitely peaks and, and valleys in this where you have better success with it than others. But it's it's a special thing, man. Nothing like it. I want them to do it, too. I don't know that they will. I want, I just want Enhanced to make another game, but... Also, this is this is just perfect. It's it's crazy that it still has this effect six years after its release, and it still works. It still feels good. It's still fun to play through. Um, and again, I mean, like this isn't like the first time I played through in six years. I've played it not yeah, yearly, yeah. but like I've touched this game in different regards a couple yeah. times throughout its uh, no, a few times throughout its its release since release. Yeah, and no, it's I, still I, yeah. I love it. I like going back to the. There are some other things. I want to. I want to come back to journey mode in a second, or or at least the stages in particular in a second. But I do think we should talk quickly about just some of the effect modes in the game. Um, there are a bunch of different modes, um, but these are sort of just challenge based things that you get letter grades on. So there's uh, classic sort of marathon modes that have different rules you can jump into there's uh score chase there's line clear there's time limit things like that um they do have more of the like so and these are like broken up they have like uh what do they have they're they're the the chill versions of these things as well where you're kind of not penalized as hard Uh, there's no game overs um which is nice. Um, and the neat thing is every week uh, there's a kind of a weekend event that happens where all of these modes are uh, not given, they're like they're the uh, like featured playlist or whatever. So you kind of like 
go through and play those. And by playing those modes, you're contributing to the global world score. It's very similar, similar to Luminous Electronic Symphonies, like block clearing thing uh, on Vita, but sort of in a big global Tetris thing. Um, they do combine, this is part of the, in the effect modes, this is where you get some of the playlist stuff where you see like, all of the levels broken up by like sea, wind, and world, where all of those things are combined into one. Um, but this is, I don't know, I always thought this was a nice way to do, to still play Tetris Effect and do something a little bit different than uh, than Journey Mode. And I think we've talked a lot about different puzzle games over the last few weeks, and this really connected does have, and we'll talk more about this in our big, big, you know, recap, uh, or kind of like, our post-mortem on, on these games in a couple of months, but it's something that stands out to me about Connected is like, this really is the complete package in terms of puzzle games. This is the standard for what other puzzle games should look to. Like, you know, do we have the modes that we need to sustain all types of gameplay for all types of players? And I think Tetris Effect Connected does that. Um, I don't Anything on the effect mode, or I'm sorry, the, yeah, effect modes? Mm-hmm. Before we, uh, I, I do want to jump back to journey mode to close out. But. Uh, no, I think you hit it all. I really personally haven't played a lot of effect. I've touched it, but I haven't played a lot of it. I recommend the the weekend ritual, um, just to do those things, and just sort of like it, it's a fun. For a really long time, I was that was my Saturday morning. Like, get up and just do some Tetris. It just gets your brain moving, and again, it's that sort of like meditative thing where you can clear out you also like uh i don't know i like that it's again like to tie back into the bigger idea of like we're all connected um but you get to like work together to do yeah these challenges which is neat uh my only other question around journey mode is do you have a favorite stage or, or like a, a top five favorite stages oh um I I mean I I I think it goes without saying Metamorphosis is I yeah it's probably my favorite um yeah. followed by I think the deep would be uh the next second um but going back through this I I think I like I like Hula Soul a lot mm-hmm. um the last area has a couple song like they go back to lyrics and songs. I kind of like when lyrics are involved mm. in the in in the yeah. track. I think like Mermaid Cove had it. I can't remember which ones now in that last area, but Mermaid Cove I think had it. I mean, I think Stratosphere had it too. Yeah. Um and then um kind of back to the, some of the earlier levels. I I like Downtown Jazz a lot. Um that's yeah. just it stands out, especially early one. Um but yeah, that's one that like stands out visually. And um Yeah, I would say those are probably the ones that that Oh, and cele- on the replay, celebration. I kind of forgot about that one. Celebration, like I said, just in the in the peaks and valleys of journey mode in, far- in terms of difficulty. That's the one that's like, all right, lift off. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot in the middle cuz to your point, like I've played journey mode so many times, but I'll do so many where I like start and stop. Or I, I'm like, I want to play, I just want to play Metamorphosis, but I don't want to just play Metamorphosis. So I'll do area six and let it mm-hmm. roll into seven or something like that. So I end up missing some of those middle ones and replaying it again, beginning to end and getting to see like Forest Dawn again was a, a really, really mm-hmm. great level. Um, I also really liked Spirit Canyon and like, I think like Spirit Canyon and like Yin and Yang, Starfall. They're all ones that I fully, if you told me to sit down and write down like just a visual description of what each level is, I probably wouldn't have remembered those. And I probably would have blurred things like Turtle Dreams and Dolphin Surf together, thinking they're like one and the same. Yeah. Um, where like when I in- definitely remembered Balloon High, you know, or yeah. Orbit. Like they were, they were there. I remember Da Vinci. I couldn't remember like where it was, but I remember like the, the windows yeah, and yeah, the skies. Yeah. And the um, gear. Yeah. That stands out. Um, um, when in doubt, draw water, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong. <laughs> I do really like Karma Wheel. It's the first, like, just I, I don't Which know, because Pharaoh's Karma Wheel, the third level. Oh, Karma Wheel. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. 
the Pharaoh's Code, like, is a completely different feeling from the Deep, but it's also sort of like, okay, it, I, it, it still feels like part of the same thing. Where like Karma Wheel is like, yo, we're getting weird. You, you cool with getting weird? Because we're about yeah. to get weird. Um, and I, I don't know. I like that that element of it a lot. Um, were there any that surprised you this time around that you like forgot about or, or that you thought? Oh, man, Definitely I'm glad this level's here. Celebration was the one that like took me by surprise at how much like I I, I liked it again. Um, forgot about Yang. I knew there was like it existed, but I forgot that Yang Yang level like that like the um the balance between the two like the fire and like it's like you said it's not ice but it's not water either. It's yeah, like yeah. blue. It's blue fire. Yeah. Um, and then Hula Soul again like one of those those ones that I pick up BPM like I forgot I, like. I always remember Metamorphosis picking up the BPM and some, I can't name them, but like some of the ones later and then playing again, like, right, these ones, we hit hard here. Yes. Yeah. I've been saying BPM. I guess the the average listener will know beats per minute. <laughs> yeah. But okay. It's common enough. Right? I would think. Well, there it is. I. Yeah. It, yeah. An hour later into the episode, there it is. I defined it. <laughs> um, that's journey mode. Yeah, and that's yeah. Tetris effect. Tetris effect. Tetris effect connected. All part of the same. Um, you can't even get Tetris effect anymore, right? It's just all bundled now. I think it just is connected. I think yeah, because connected was a free update for. Tetris Effect. Um, Was it? Tetris Eff- I thought you had to buy Connected on PlayStation. I don't think. I think I got it for free. Okay. I think. Uh, I know Connected. It, the big deal with that was it day one was on Game Pass that release day. Yes. For Series X, I remember that. I don't think it's on there anymore, <laughs> but I remember that. Yeah. I, yeah, maybe you did have to pay. I thought it was a free upgrade to Connected. But I the PS5 version was definitely a paid upgrade from the PS4 version. Because I had to pay for it to get the newer newer version. Um, yeah. Um, the... No, we'll save. We'll save this question. Okay. I was going to ask a qu- question about uh, you know, ranking, but we're we're going to we're going to hold off. Yes. Uh, we will be ranking Tetris Effect later this year. In November, we're going to kind of recap all four of our Wii Sports killers. If you've not followed the season this far, a quick reminder Right now, if you go to thefreecheese.com slash the list where we have ranked all of the video games we've played and recorded episodes on since 2022, the top of that list has been Wii Sports since like, I don't know, man, a couple weeks into us doing this new format of the podcast. And we came into this season, season 12, that we're, we're halfway or more than halfway through now. We came into this season with the idea of Man, something's got to knock Wii Sports off, right? Why don't we just go for it? And the four games we nominated that have a chance of maybe, potentially, becoming the new number one are this week's Tetris Effect Connected, Super Mario Galaxy 2, Halo Combat Evolved, and Pokemon Gold version, Pokemon Silver version. Uh, we've already wrapped up our discussion on Pokemon Gold and Silver back in July. This here's our, our kind of back half of the Tetris Effect discussion. We'll do a part two on Super Mario Galaxy 2 next month, and then our third part of the Halo Combat Evolved series at the end of September. But in November, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about all four of them together, and then we're going to rank all of these uh, to see sort of where they land which i'm intrigued by very much so 
Um, Cause I I don't know I don't know if anything can beat Wii Sports, but then again, maybe everything can beat Wii Sports. We'll find out then. Next week, we've officially reached the end of puzzle, of the puzzle block here, uh, the summer puzzle block. Um, we're gonna close out the summer uh, before school starts. That is, haha, <laughs> with Jet Grind Radio or the Dreamcast. So come back next week. Enjoy that one with us. Uh, and then come back in November if you want to sort of hear what happens with Tetris Effect and the rest. Until then, thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.